We're learning at least 22 buildings on NC State's campus have tested positive for PCBs in the last seven years. The cancer causing chemicals were detected on the outside and inside of dorms, libraries and classroom buildings. Five on your sides, Keely Arthur explains how those contaminations have been handled. Keely. The university closed Poe Hall after testing revealed high levels of PCBs last November. And since then, 215 people have reported to WRL News that they developed cancer after working or studying in that building. For more than six months, we've asked for PCB test results of other buildings. And tonight, we finally have them. PCBs found inside NC State residence halls. It's definitely not a great feeling to know that they've been discovered in there. WRL investigates filed requests for records involving Matrix Health and Safety Consultants, the company that's done PCB testing at NC State for years. Among the 966 pages returned, an email from a Matrix employee to NC State in April 2019 says, quote, now the caulking at the three dorms is full of PCB. An NC State facilities manager replied, I figured that would be the case. I feel like there are a lot of buildings on campus are very old, so you never know. PCBs were found in the caulking surrounding dorm room dorms inside Gold Residence Hall at levels considered hazardous by the EPA. The inside of Turlington Residence Hall and five buildings also tested positive for PCBs at varying levels. Metcalf, Bowen and Carroll Residence Halls were among the 20 buildings where PCBs were detected on the outside. In total, 22 NC State buildings tested positive for PCBs inside, outside or both since 2017. I'm not surprised at all. Not surprised, uh, says environmental uh, health scientist uh, Dr. Robert Herrick, because caulking that contained these chemicals was so widely used in the 60s and 70s. It was, you know, like the top quality material that people used at the time. That is until a federal ban in 1979 after determining they cause a myriad of health issues. Herrick says even when PCBs are found on the outside of buildings, actions should be taken on the inside. When you find the high levels in the caulk, whether it's inside or outside, you know, that's a signal that there could be high levels in the air in the building. Uh, and maybe in the dust in the building. Records generally show that when PCBs were suspected or discovered, NC State took the required safety steps to remove them. But WREL investigates wanted to know if all PCBs found inside or outside campus buildings had been remediated. So we asked the university. They called that question misleading and said that, quote, the regulatory requirements regarding PCB assessment, mitigation, and remediation are applied differently depending on the circumstances, and accordingly, NC State's responses are also dependent on the circumstances. And I think that it's going to be very important in the future to tackle this issue, you know, get rid of any traces of PCBs all around campus that we can get rid of. Now, these tests were done mostly ahead of construction projects, but Herrick told us responsible owners of any building built from the 60s through the 80s can work with an experienced consultant to test caulk and fluorescent light fixtures for PCBs. Those are big culprits. If you don't find anything great, if you do, air sampling and further investigations should be done. Mm. It just doesn't stop. Thank you, Kaylee.